irrespective of the choice of uh, a quantum computing paradigm, you will always face the problem. How do I encode the classical information I have into a quantum system to perform some quantum protocol? So there are a couple of ways of doing it, and here's an overview of all of them. The easiest thing to do is to do something called basis encoding. So in this case, you don't do anything different from what you do on a digital computer. So say you have the number three that you would like to encode, then you would write it as a binary. So this would be the representation of a digital computing, where this is bit zero and this is bit one. And then you just take this and you write it as a quantum state. So you would use two qubits and you would flip both of them to one and it would describe the number three. And if you have a vector, say the, of these two elements, you can create a binary vector of that and then you can concatenate the two strings into a single cat, into a four qubit uh, state in this case. So the greatest advantage of this encoding is that it's very easy to prepare because you only have to flip certain, certain qubits. Most quantum computers start from being initialized in the zero state, and then you just have to make these not operation, the X operations, to get to the state that you want to express. But the great disadvantage is that it's very wasteful of your qubits. You need lots of lots of qubits to describe, say, floating point numbers. Another way of doing it is amplitude encoding. So imagine that you have a vector, and let's have this assumption that your vector is already normalized. Its length is 1. Then what you can do is just write down the same thing with the, with the original coefficients, indexing the individual coefficients or probability amplitudes with the, with the basis vector. So the advantage of this is that it requires a lot fewer qubits. And in principle, at least in theory, this is of infinite precision. So if you have a real number here, you would have a real number here. But the disadvantage is that it's unclear exactly how you would prepare this state and how you would uh, read out the actual values here. So you would have to uh, dream up some state preparation protocol, and then you would have to perform tomography to understand what these probability amplitudes are at the end of your calculation. Then we can also encode uh, the problem in a Hamiltonian. So when you think about it, there are, there are actually two ways of doing this. One is that we have seen over and over again. This is the, the Ising way. You have a problem, you map it to, to the Ising model or a quadratic unconstrained binary optimization problem, which is given in this form, and that's what you saw, for instance, by quantum annealing. So the encoding comes in in these couplings, in these bias terms. These are the ones expressing your problem. Whereas here it was the state, and here, it will have the probability amplitudes. So the advantage of this is that it's fairly easy to implement. You know, we are up to thousands of qubits in a physical system implementing this model. But the disadvantage is that it has a limit of, limit, very limited scope in what you can do. You can solve either optimization or sampling problems with this paradigm. Then the second way of doing Hamiltonian encoding is by doing Hamiltonian simulation. Now, this simulation is a bit misleading because this is not a simulation on a classical digital computer. This is a quantum computer simulating a quantum system. So what you are doing is actually you are trying to implement this unitary on a quantum computer. And uh, an example of this is exactly what uh, the QAOA optimization algorithm does when it approximates the, the adiabatic pathway. And uh, a very, very important subroutine in many idealized quantum machine learning algorithms is quantum matrix inversion and, it's, and it does the exact same thing. It encodes the matrix to be encoded here in the Hamiltonian. So the advantage of this is exactly this. It's very natural to encode the matrix in this formalism. The disadvantage is that there are countless terms and conditions that apply. So we will only see quantum matrix inversion in the part I will talk about coherent quantum protocols and large-scale quantum computers, and it's very, very limited what we can do uh, on actual quantum computers today when we want to use this representation.